cardio. What do people need to know about cardio for fat loss? It sucks. Next question. <laughs> so cardio is best seen in most cases outside of a sport context, because then it's cardio for sports, totally different. You do what you have to do. Cardio is best seen as I need to burn a certain number of calories to get me to that moderate high level. And I have a couple of considerations. One is preference. One is convenience. One is time cost and a few others. And so if you think there's something magical to the step mill or to driving to the gym and getting on the cycle ergometer or incline walking or something, you're going to be in for a rude awakening because none of that shit matters. Just your step count can get you as lean as your dietary adherence and genetics are capable of getting you. Cardio is a way to burn calories. Any kind of physical activity is roughly equivalent for it. You just measure the amount of time that you're doing it. To me, the two big factors that stand out, maybe three, sustainability, enjoyment, and time cost competing with other activities through the day. On these three, step tracker and step counting is like a huge deal. I don't want to oversell it, but it kind of wins on all counts. Why? If you have to get 11,000 calories every day as part of your plan, that's what my current amount. 11,000 calories? It's good guy, 11,000. That's right. Where's the KFC? <clears throat> 11,000 steps a day. What ends up happening is, can I get on the treadmill and do 11,000 steps? Sure. But also I can talk to Mr. Nick Shaw, CEO of RP and do a business meeting while I'm hands-free on my phone and walk around my backyard. I can take a walk with my wife. I can walk the dog. I can go to the grocery store. I can pace around. I can do every activity of daily living that actually accomplishes something else. And it's always adding to my step count. Right. So the advantage of steps walking is that it is not constraining as many other things that you can do as sitting on a, a assault bike. And doing or, nothing but that. Correct. Yeah. Understood. And it can actually empower those things. Take two scenarios. One is a person is doing only pre-planned cardio. They're on the elliptical for 30 minutes a day to burn whatever number of calories. And they don't track anything else. They do the elliptical. Their husband comes home late from work. And he goes, hey, um, I got to run to the store. Do you want to come? Wife's tired. You go, honey. It's okay. Husband's alone at the store. He sees a woman that's marginally more attractive. You know the rest. That's it. Divorce, post nup. The, the whole elliptical thing. caused my breakup. That's it. The alternative view is if you're doing step tracking, you can go to the store and not have to worry about how tired you're going to be from cardio. Because once people check box their cardio, the human body, when it's under caloric constraint for long, is really, really finicky and cheap, and it wants to make sure you don't spend anything else. So once you've done your cardio for the day, you just sit on the couch and you do this. Not ideal. But if you have a step tracker, everything counts. So if your kids are like, mommy, mommy, play with us. You're like, well, shit, I'll just go over my steps today and tomorrow I can take a bigger break. Everything you do, the step Is that how you see up. your steps in the same way as you would see calories across a week? Yes, absolutely. Some days you step a bit more, some days a bit less. Some days you eat a bit more, some days a bit so less. So aggregating that across totally. a week. Totally. That's the thing that matters in the end. Now, you don't want to get too crazy where you don't move at all, and then you have a day of 40,000 steps. Yeah, it's yeah. unsustainable. It's the blah, same blah, blah, as blah. the alternate day fasting thing in some ways. Yeah, which some people love, apparently. But if you catch me at 8 p.m. of the day I'm fasting, don't catch me. Because <sighs> What about the different impact that intensity of cardio has on the body. I've heard about the, the afterburn effect. Yeah. Well, it, surely you're not going to get that if you're just lollygagging in zone two as you saunter down the road for 11,000 steps, plodding. You, you walk to a chair from your living room couch, you sit down, <sighs> you're like, afterburn. <sighs> <laughs> so great question. The afterburn effect, or EPOC as it's known, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption is uh, colloquially one of the most overrated things in exercise science. It's just not that big of a deal. It adds up a little over time, but the way you get crazy epoch is you do like repeat hill sprints or insanely highly damaging whole body lifting workouts. Then you see, a, you know, a couple dozen, maybe a hundred or two extra calories burned over a 24 hour period. But 
over 100 extra calories burned is already a real big deal, very unlikely. Mm. And so the intensity of the exercise, as far as aggregate ability to burn fat and, and lose weight, basically doesn't matter. What's much more of a concern is sustainability. If you think you have to run, jog for cardio because it's intense and it's going to burn that fat in a super special way and your knees start to hurt, you stop jogging. There goes your diet plan. But you probably aren't going to injure yourself walking or swimming or doing an elliptical. And if you like to do those things, even though they don't occur at 5,000 miles an hour, not dunking a basketball for reps or some kind of crazy high intensity shit, it's going to burn the same number of calories because the afterburn effect is so small. And if you're lifting weights, you get that anyway. It's not a thing. So you, know, you made kind of a, a great point earlier where uh, the sort of diet versus um, activity, one of those is really much more responsible. How many calories your physical activity burns is so much grander scheme of a thing than how much afterburn it causes that mm. I just wouldn't really worry about the afterburn much. I would worry about like, is this kind of physical activity schedule something I can do today, tomorrow, mm. next week, next month? If that's the case, that's your shit. And to that end, I would encourage some people who get bored of just walking to do a couple different things. You can do Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you can do Thai boxing, you can do regular boxing, you can do the Zumba class at your gym, you can do swimming, you can do cycling, you can do running, you can do the elliptical, you can walk some days. As long as you're getting the calories going some way, it can be as monotonous as you like. Some people, they do a podcast, they walk around the block 18 times, they love it, they want nothing else. That's mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Other people, they need some different stuff. Different is great. What you don't want to do is do the same thing over and over that you hate, especially if it's high impact and high intensity. Like every time your feet hit the concrete, your knees are like, I hate you. What the f are you doing to me? <laughs> and you're like, well, my knees are gone, but I'm leaner. Not sustainable, not good. But if running twice a week is fine, as long as you swim and bike and maybe walk the other days and your total aggregate calories are the same, then you're really in a winning formula. It's got to be slightly difficult for some people to work out, okay, I did 10,000 steps. Dr. Mike said, do 10,000 steps and do 10,000 steps, but I just did pickleball for an hour. What's that? Am I counting my steps in pickleball? I ran, presumably running 10,000 steps burns more calories than walking 10,000 steps. Do I count my steps there? How do you think about factoring in cardio output to compare it uh, comparatively to your 11,000 yeah, steps? Yeah. Yeah. There's two ways to do it I think are good. I'm sure there are others. One is you go into the one of five trillion free online counters that adjust for all these things and you can just get the calories and adjust for almost everything. There are hilarious pictures of back in the 70s and 80s, they did a lot of measurement of calorie expenditure and real world activities. So you got this guy with a full on gas mask with tubes into an oxygen pack and carbon collection pack and he's golfing. <laughs> like, <laughs> how many <laughs> calories do you burn golfing? Holy shit, you golfing in space? Yeah. So they've done all that work. So you can get all those formulas. No, you don't need the formulas. You just type it into an online calculator. You just cal I golfed for four hours. How many calories did I burn? They'll tell you. That was body weight, blah, blah, blah. You're good to go. Um, that gets annoying a little bit. So a better alternative probably is to give yourself, um, average daily step goal. And if you know, you're a person that also likes to do pickleball, I don't know what the f that is. Shut up. What is it? I actually don't know what it is. It's, it's like tennis for old people or right. paddle for poor people. Right. My, um, Wibble Wimbledon ranked tennis instructor tells me I don't need to worry about things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He only works for me. On he you. stopped playing. He also, no, the massage guy does that. Chris, we run a professional organization here. I was going to say a bunch of jokes that we're all going to get us canceled. In any case, let's say you're pretty physically active. You do some pick up this, you do some pick up that, you walk more, you do this and that. Maybe set your goal at 8,000 steps every day on average. You get 8,000 steps. I give an example with my wife. My wife trains multiple times a week in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Hardcore. She's an addict now. It's scary because she's going to kill me sooner or later. If I ever turn up dead, she's suspect number one. I want this official in public. And some days she'll just do her 10,000 steps. Other days she'll do 8,000 steps, which is like maybe a minimum for her. And then. She'll do jujitsu for an hour, live rolling with psychotic, insane people. 
that burns way more calories than the, just the steps alone, but because she always hits 10,000 a week on average, any extra jujitsu mm. is extra and she loses weight a little faster. If she's tired, she'll ease up on the jujitsu and do more technique stuff and not as much live rolling. So if you're a person that knows you're pretty physically active outside of walking, I'd still do walking and do a tracker and just peg it at 8k or 7k. That's my average. And I know I work on top of that, but. If you are a person who does nothing else, yeah, peg your steps at 10 or 11 K a day. And like, there's no pickleball anywhere. Cause that's not a real sport. I swear to God, you made that up. I'm going to guess as well that having a more consistent number of steps that you take every single day means that you don't need to reset that habit. How many did I do? I, I did that thing to, you know, carry the three and uh, sort of cross this over. Uh, I certainly found that with, um, any diets that were inconsistent, any training plans that were inconsistent, even any productivity days. Like sometimes on a Monday coming back after a weekend feels really great because I've taken a little bit of time. Then sometimes I'm like, uh, I got to you know, restart the beast a little bit after I had a couple of days where I was chilling out. So I think maintaining consistency in the things that don't fatigue you or ideally rejuvenate you at least a little bit, uh, that seems to make sense to me. It makes a hundred percent sense. Consistency is an enormous superpower in a fat loss diet because consistency means honoring the plan you chose. And when you lose weight for long enough and get lean enough, every fiber of your being starts to tell you do anything but this, train less, eat more, reconsider. Maybe you can stop your diet today. You can pick it up next week. No big deal. If the consistency is there and you do more or less similar things every day, every week, just do the thing and the results will happen.